June 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 14 of the New Testament. Now receive the one who is weak in the faith, and do not have disputes over differing opinions. One person believes in eating everything, but the weak person eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not despise the one who does not, and the one who abstains must not judge the one who eats everything. For God has accepted him. Who are you to pass judgment on another servant? Before his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person regards one day holier than other days, and another regards them all alike. Each must be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day does it for the Lord. The one who eats, eats for the Lord because he gives thanks to God, and the one who abstains from eating abstains for the Lord, and he gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for himself, and none dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this reason Christ died and returned to life, so that he may be the Lord of both the dead and the living. But you who eat vegetables only, Why do you judge your brother or sister? And you who eat everything, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow to me, and every tongue will give praise to God. Therefore, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, we must not pass judgment on one another, but rather determine never to place an obstacle or a trap before a brother or sister. I know and am convinced in the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean in itself. Still, it is unclean to the one who considers it unclean. For if your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy by your food someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you consider good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God does not consist of food and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. For the one who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by people. So then, let us pursue what makes for peace and for building up one another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. For although all things are clean, It is wrong to cause anyone to stumble by what you eat. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith you have keep to yourself before God. Blessed is the one who does not judge himself by what he approves. But the man who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not do so from faith, and whatever is not from faith is sin. God, when we read this passage, especially if it's, if it's something we're reading for the first time, uh, we're bound to be a little bit confused because we no longer live under the law. And we have to remember that, that Paul was in the middle of kind of a fight <laughs> for a lot of things between the Jews and the Jews who uh, were accepting of Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and then the new Christians, the Gentile Christians. And what did all that look like? And he was talking about how under the law, certain foods were clean and unclean. And if you still wanted to live with with that guideline, that's fine. But remember who's really in charge, which is you, God. Um, For the new Christians, if they thought everything was clean because they never lived (laughs) under the law, then that was fine too. And to not judge each other. But I think we can apply this to things more of our present day of understanding that everyone has different walks and paths with you, God, and to be okay with wherever anybody is and not pass judgment at that time is not only incredibly important, but part of remaining consistent within the body of God so that people from the outside don't see us doing all this infighting that seems to happen in churches and with fellow Christians. I also think about the situation of causing somebody else to sin. I I think about that a lot of how often we get closed up in our world, God, and we're doing things that to us aren't sinful, 
or don't cause us to sin, yet we don't stop for a second and love our neighbor, love our friend, and realize what we're doing is actually causing them to sin. Um, I think about recently I was in a women's Bible study, and everybody in there is married. And we came to a section that was talking about sex, which is fine unto itself uh, because you made it and it's and it's awesome in the right context. But I'm the single person and, and sex, obviously, that desire to have sex is one of my areas that's really easy to be a temptation to fall into sin. Um, and so I, I was sitting, I pr- prayed in advance to you to protect me. Uh, and to be strong while all these women were talking about different things having to do with sex and their husbands and just things in their marriage. And at the, towards the end, I had to say, I don't think you understand how hard it is to sit here and listen to what you just said. In fact, I should have probably walked out at the beginning <laughs> because it was really, really difficult to sit and listen to that. And it wasn't sinful for them. Obviously they were married and and it was beautiful and they have amazing marriages they're working on. But when they're saying it in front of somebody like me, where that's a huge temptation in my life, huge temptation, (laughs) you know that God, um, then, then the struggle becomes incredibly hard and they are causing that temptation to rise that day greatly in my life. Um, and, and again, my responsibility would have been, I should have walked out sooner than that. But I did vocalize that to them, that you need to, to just like I'm very respectful, or I try to be really respectful of my married friends to not talk about certain things in front of them, uh, especially my freedom of being single, uh, because they start to, I have learned, that starts them to start to stumble because they start to covet that, wanting to be able to just take off whenever they want. Um, but they have husbands and kids who, who they love very much. Um, same thing as with me. They get to have sex whenever they want. <laughs> they do not. Um, unfortunately. Um, because you made it, you made sex to be something uh, beautiful and intimate and all about you within a marriage, uh, which is just kind of crazy awesome to think about, God. So we really have to be conscious of that, whether whether it's we're out drinking Uh, with dinner and having a glass of wine and that doesn't cause us to sin but maybe somebody with us that would cause them to stumble maybe alcohol is that temptation in their life or maybe we can um, go and hang out uh, and do something that's kind of mind-numbing which I know has nothing to do with your kingdom Uh, but sometimes you just need to walk on the beach or do whatever And sometimes that's really good and and we can control that and not cause that to be a sin, but then other people can use it to be lazy or procrastinators or something else that's tempting them into not getting back into your word. So we need to be really careful, not only of our world, but that we don't pass judgment on other people because they don't have the same world that we do, that they're not in the same place. And and then the other half of that, that, that this chapter talks about, which I think is so amazing is be really hyper aware of what's going to cause sin to your fellow brothers and sisters and don't don't cause that in their life for pete's sakes i have enough temptation sin wise as it is sex is all around us (laughs) don't don't add more by talking about it around me (laughs) yeah god i thank you so much for for making us all unique for making us all individuals for making us all on different paths with you Uh, different things that work for us, different things that don't work for us, because all of us then have different types of relationships with you, ultimately all to glorify you, but all different experiences, which just makes our testimonies absolutely amazing and all about you. God, help us be strong and and fully aware of what's going on outside of our world uh, so that we make sure that we don't cause a fellow brother or sister to stumble inadvertently um, by doing something that is not sin causing to us, but could easily cause them to stumble and help us keep ourselves strong in helping them with their walk. In your son's name, I pray. Amen.